everybody, and welcome back to the King Fox channel. My name is Matt Conagher, and I'm building Kit Fox Model 7 STI. In this video, I'm going to be unboxing my new small rig for the iPhone 14 Pro Max. And uh, I had no takers on my merch giveaway for the iPhone 12 Pro Max, so, uh, so I have two now. One sitting on the shelf collecting dust, and uh, here's the other one. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open it up. All right, let's see what we got here. About the same thing we had on that picture the uh, other one actually has the dust right on it oh, three super tiny screws i hope i don't need those for anything important uh expandability compact and protective buttons and mag safe so as usual i got that little a button opens it up looks like rubber buttons on the side i've got cold shoe mounts there i think that's what they're called rubber buttons on this side supposed to be more room for the antenna and there's two little screws here and one here so i assume those three little screws there are in the event that I want I lose one or I want to move things around. So stick the phone in there. This case has a larger access hole on the side for the phone silencing button, which is a nice improvement over the previous model. You just click the button on the side, give a little shake. This one's a little bit tight with that rubber gasket in there and the phone drops right out. Give it a pull and then you can stick it back in whatever case you want, so it slides in there pretty easy. All in all, it's a really good case. Also picked up a new case from Casetify, which I saw online, and they embossed this, and it's got all these nice little things in it. It's got the uh, anti-shock corners, so supposedly you can drop it from 20-some feet. Um, so, yeah, that one's pretty nice when I'm not in the small rig case cameras I've been using in an attempt to bring better footage to the channel. Got the GoPro 9, the 3, the DJI, an older Sony CyberShot, of course the iPhone 14 Pro Max in the new case. And not in the field of view, but recording with is the iPad. So all in all I have a total of six cameras, so hopefully there should be no excuse for poor camera angles. This particular day I got a box in the mail, and I'm not sure what's in it. So let's check it out. And this baby's heavy. Did you look at that? It's a one wheel. It will help me build faster as I'll be able to spin around the airplane faster. watching. I showed you all the Fuji sprayer back in video number seven. I thought you might be interested in seeing what came in the box with the purchase. Hopefully I'm right. First things first, I'm going to pull out the 25 foot hose, which includes the air control valve to reduce overspray and bounce back. And it also has a short 5 foot hose, which goes from the gun down to the, the heavier hose. It also includes a 5 for 5 bonus kit, which I'll be pulling out here shortly. This is the 5 for 5 bonus kit, basically it's just a cleaning kit for the gun. It's got some brushes in there and some, some needles to, to sneak in the, the small ports and get those cleaned out. Got an instruction manual, a registration card, and and there's an extra filter for the turbine itself. And the turbine comes in this box, of course, and the thing weighs about 40 pounds, so it's a little bit little bit cumbersome. And the sprayer right out of the box only comes with one tip, so since I didn't order any of the other tips immediately, I realized later on that I would need some other tips. So I ended up purchasing the, the Fuji air cap set, 5100. It's got a 2, 4, 5, and a 6 for the T-Series spray gun with a 5137 carrying case bundle. There's five items in total. Also comes with a power cable. I think it's five or five or seven feet maybe even a little bit longer. But you have to screw it on to the, to the sprayer itself. And then there's a small screw packet there that I just placed down on the table. Those are for a hanging bracket for the gun that mounts to the turbine itself. Inside here's some more instructions, the registration, another registration manual, some instructions. There's a, there's a kit in there also, and it helps you measure the viscosity of whatever component you're gonna put inside the canister. There you can see the gun and the measuring cup inside the box there. So all in all, a pretty, pretty tidy package. I'm looking forward to using it here shortly. I'm gonna go over, uh, Uncle Amazon stopped by today and, and brought me a few items that I probably need going forward. So I thought I'd talk about those 
So from the wiring up of the trim actuator, I didn't have a wire stripper. I had to use a X-Acto knife and strip the wires that way. So I picked up a, uh, a wire stripper and cutter. So that should help me out with those items moving forward. Um, one of the previous episodes also, you didn't see it, but my Dremel stopped working and I decided to take it apart. And here's actually a replacement part. So I got a couple of uh, drive shaft connectors, if you will, so I can actually repair something instead of just throw it away and go buy a new one. Uh, I'll be pleased if that actually turns out. I got some uh, step bits from DeWalt because I'm going to be needing I'm going to be needing those in the future. Drilling some holes. A roll pin punch set. Since I've been pushing in some roll pins and they're quite difficult to get get to, so I got a uh, a multi-sized roll pin punch set so I can put those roll pins in. The I got a fluke meter. So I'm going to be doing some electronic stuff and I might have to test a circuit or Make sure I have power someplace, so I've always wanted one of these, so I decided now is the time to pick up the fluke meter. What else came in the mail? You probably saw the the shear pin or the, the pin in the flap lever detent that I drilled out and then broke the drill bit off in the detent pin. If you hadn't, go back and watch that video, but uh, if you have seen it, uh, obviously I had a little problem drilling perpendicular to the, to the workpiece, so I picked up a it's a mini V-drill guide, so it helps you guide your drill bit and keep it perpendicular to the workpiece, and it works on round items as well. So I'll, uh, I'll showcase that hopefully in the near future. I did some safety wiring, and I did it incorrectly working on both sides of the flapper on mixer, so I had to cut them off and then do it again. And there's a lot of spinning of the old pliers, so I picked up some some aviation pliers that you can... Uh, do your zip tie and width faster, pinch it on there and pull the, the handle and it spins the, the wire tie down. So I got two sizes of those just because the two size kit was cheaper than just buying a single, really. So I've got a big one and a small one. I got a Fabric Pro iron. I know I'm putting the cart in front of the horse a little bit, but I was... Uh, I was looking at that other iron and you need a thermometer and a temperature gauge and you're trying to calibrate the temperature right. So so I found this digital iron online and since they're uh, hard to find and everything seems to be out of stock for some strange reason, I decided to pick that up while it was available. And then a couple other things for cameras since my camera angles have not been very good. I got a tripod for the iPad to hold that so, so I can uh, get better shots. Then I picked up a small rig case for the iPhone and a small rig clamp so I can clamp the iPhone on to any parts of the fuselage so I can get, a, again, another better camera angle as I'm uh, working along and you guys could see what I'm doing a little bit better. And then for the old trusty GoPro 3, Hero 3, I found this, well, like everything else, made in China. Um, kit that's supposed to hold it in a container because my my plastic container that holds the the GoPro is is broken so hopefully I can get that rigged up to a to a Joby or anything like that and speaking of Joby I got the Gorillapod action tripod so that I can hook a DSLR on or a, or another digital camera that I have again for better camera angles. So that leaves one, two, three, four cameras that I should be able to capture a little bit better and in more detail what I'm actually working on so you guys can see that in the future because that's probably just about as important as good audio and hopefully this audio is uh, is kicking. So with that being said, uh, moving on into next the episode, I'll be picking up where I left off and uh, and I'll finally install the center console side panels. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you guys didn't mind the demonstrations and showing you guys some of the things that I've been using throughout the build. And uh, if you're in videos like this, in addition to the build, let me know in the comments down below. Have a great day and we'll see you on the next one.